guys, I want to walk you through installing OTR version 2.3. If you're a Windows user, it's pretty easy. Um, if you're a Mac user, it's still easy, but you do have to go through the security um, steps that Apple has set up over the past OS releases. Um, but I do want to walk you through that. Um, also, uh, due to a partnership with Orchestral Tools, the OTR download package has increased in size tremendously. Due to the size and the amount of data that's included, I employed the 7Z zip mechanism. It should behave like a normal zip file, but I'm going to walk you through that as well. So let's go ahead and dive in. You'll see on the screen is orchestral template for reaper.com. Um, if you click on the download OTR now button in the top right corner, um, you can, that'll take you through the download steps. Uh, I've already downloaded it. So I'm going to go to my download folder and you'll see that I have the OTR two, three, uh, file already downloaded. It extracts a zip file on the Mac. Um, it's going to look the exact same way on Mac and windows. Uh, You'll notice there's a README file in here. This README file uh, just walks you through uh, the explanation of the 7Z uh, compression mechanism before when you extracted the zip file, all of your OTR folders were there. Uh, in this particular case, uh, there is an OTR23.7Z file. That 7Z file uses the 7-zip compression algorithm. As you'll see, the zip file uh, the, or the 7-Z file inside the zip file is uh, 406 meg megabytes. Uh, if I had not used the 7-Z mechanism, it probably would have been uh, two or three gigabytes uh, in size just for the download. That's after compression. So the 7Z mechanism was important for this. Uh, so that being said, uh, it should operate very similarly to a zip file. Um, I can double click it. It's going to extract it. If you're on Windows, it should do the same thing. If your native zip file um, software does not recognize 7Z files, uh, that's what the README file walks you through. Uh, as that's working, um, you'll see that on a Mac, you can visit um, keka.io to download uh, some software or 7-zip.org and download it for Windows. On Windows, it provides you a right uh, click flyout menu. So that being said, uh, if you're on Windows and you've used OTR before, you know it's pretty self-explanatory. Inside the OTR folder, um, you'll see that there is a traditional OTR uh, folder that includes the Reaper app. Uh, you just drag that to where you want it to go. I recommend putting it at the root directory on whatever drive you're using, the C drive or any portable drive. That will minimize any potentials for file name length errors. If you're on Mac, we have to do a, a little bit of a different process. What we're going to do is we want to make sure that we download the latest. Now this is for Mac specifically. We want to make sure we download the latest version of Reaper. You can go to reaper.fm, click the download Reaper link, and that will download the file. And what we want to do is we want to create a portable install on the Mac OS. So you'll notice that there is a for portable install on Mac OS folder. All of this is discussed in these instructions. I do want to say that. So on Windows, pretty self-explanatory. It explains to drag and drop. On Mac OS, um, you can see it's a little bit more of a sizable installation guide. But regardless, uh, we're going to go ahead and create our portable install on a Mac. This lets Reaper run independently uh, from the applications folder and, and uh, lets you move it around, do whatever you want to do with it. So to begin with, we're going to open the for portable install folder. And then we are also going to go to our downloads folder. Um, as I mentioned, I've already downloaded the latest version of Reaper. So this is 667. The Windows version has this installed already, so you don't have to worry about that. And we're going to drag the Reaper icon over here. We're not going to drag it to applications. We're going to drag it into our for portable install on Mac OS. Now, this is how Reaper creates a portable install. Um, there has to be a single file in this folder. If there are more files, it's not going to work. If the file is not named properly, uh, it's not going to work either. Uh, it has to be a file inside of this folder called reaper.ini. Um, which is why I've included this folder. As a user, you don't have to go through this process. Uh, when you click on Reaper, the first thing it's going to do is look to see if it's going to create a portable install or if it's going to launch like a normal application on, on Mac OS. Um, so when we double click on Reaper, it's going to ask, do we want to open this? We're going to say yes. 
it's going to go through the normal Reaper loading process. You can cancel out the plugins, skip the audio driver. That's fine. You're not going to have your uh, license key in there yet. That's perfectly fine too. Just skip over all that. Close out of it. We can close out of the um, Reaper installer as well. And you will see the inside of the Reaper folder, we now have a series of um, subfolders and files. This is exactly what we want. This means that Reaper has created a portable install inside of um, on Mac OS. If we launch this, it's only looking in this folder. Um, now what we want to do is we want to copy all of the contents of the OTR folder. So I'm just going to highlight and I can right click and choose copy. I can hit command C and we're going to go back to the for portable install on Mac OS folder. And we're just going to paste these guys in here. More folders are going to be added. Um, there's a lot of scripts and such that are going to be added. Uh, you'll see that you'll get prompted for um, to replace the folders that are in there. You can go ahead and click apply to all and click replace. You can see it's a pretty sizable file now, 2.8 gigs. And this now has all of the files that are important for OTR to run. We're almost there, okay? What we're gonna do at this point is we're gonna launch this OTR version of Reaper, but now we're gonna have to authorize all of the um, security protocols on Mac OS. And the reason is that um, inside of Reaper, this comes pre-installed with things like SWS, uh, Reaper JS extensions, Reapack. All of these include runtime environments. Um, they're, if you're not comfortable with launching it as is, you can install these all separately. It's going to take you some time, um, but you can do that. Um, like I said, OTR keeps it all installed in there from the get-go. The user plugin folder, you can see that there are a lot of these DYLIB uh, files, those require authorization. So what does this mean? Um, we're go going to, let's go ahead and close out of our web browser. And we are going to go up to the Apple icon in the top left, go to system preferences and go to security and privacy. From here, um, we can just click on the general tab and it, what we're going to see is in a moment, there are going to be some uh, options that pop up here uh, in the security settings. So we're going to go ahead and launch Reaper from the for portable install on Mac OS folder. And you can see that Mac OS is going to say, hey, we got some issues. So let's, you don't move to trash. You're going to cancel this. And it's going to ask you over here in security, um, do you want to allow this anyway? And you're going to say, allow anyway. We're going to hit OK. Allow anyway, cancel. Allow anyway, cancel. You can see how this is going to go for just a moment. It doesn't matter about any errors that you get at this point. That's OK. Close out of all of this again. You're going to see that we still have an allow anyway option. OK. Now that we have done this once, um, let's click on Reaper again. This time it's going to ask if we want to open the files that we actually authorized before. So we're going to click open, click open again, three, four, five. So there are five prompts that come up in OTR 2.3. And this means that Reaper should be functioning as expected with the OTR uh, installation already in it. So that's good news. Um, just to verify, I like to quit Reaper one more time and I like to launch it again and make sure that nothing else comes up, no other prompts. That's probably just an extra step. I'm being a little meticulous on that. Uh, lastly, the thing that you want to do to make sure you get going is go to Reaper Preferences and you want to go to the VST folder and you want to make sure that you add your path list. So you're going to add VST system paths on windows. You'll have to manually type a lot of those in, um, on Mac OS, it, it automatically populates it. Hit rescan. That's going to go through the process of setting up your, um, plugins within Reaper. 
that's important to be able to use any of the track templates and obviously any of the plugins uh, that you want to use in your projects. But anyway, um, that's a quick guide. It, it seems clunky. Yes, I know. Um, I apologize for that. There's nothing else I can really do about that. Uh, what, what I would recommend uh, if you had Reaper installed from the beginning from reaper.fm, uh, you'd have to install SWS. You'd have to install, um, all the different plugins that are kind of spread across, uh, Reaper forums plus anything that is all OTR specific. So largely almost everything in this uh, package is OTR specific, but there are reasons to have SWS and some of the other extensions installed. Anyway, I uh, hope that helps. Last step would be to take the for portable install on Mac OS folder and just drag that where you want it to go. Uh, rename it to OTR. If you want to put it on your desktop, put it there and just call it OTR and have a day, OTR 2.3. And then if you want to add the shortcut to your toolbar, um, I'd recommend even taking the Reaper app, naming it 2.3 and placing it on your taskbar alongside of any other Reaper app that's down there. And you can see when I mouse over, I have the standard uh, Reaper installation and then there's OTR 2.3 and it will launch as expected uh, this new installation. So hope that helps. If you have any other questions, please reach out at support at storyteller.im. Thank you very much for watching.